Many of today's most famous people are warning us that we live in the most scariest time, the dawn of generative AI, where they believe that machines will take away the very essence that make us human, to be able to replicate emotion, to be able to remove what makes us so unique in today's world. We fear what we don't understand. If you think back to an event in 1988, where very passionate people were protesting something that they believed in 100% would completely impact the world. I'm not talking about civil rights injustices. I'm talking about teachers who believed that the invention called the calculator would fundamentally shape and reshape how students think in the future. It would eliminate their ability to critically think and we should pause all production and stop all innovation associated with the use of calculators. We fear what we don't understand. You see, today's debate is based on a false dilemma. It focuses on what output that comes from ChatGPT and generative AI. We should be focusing on the input. You see, AI has brought about a world in which all the answers are known. Value, therefore, is understanding what question to ask. And you see, it doesn't matter whether you are a student or whether you are a professor, whether you're an employee or whether you're the CEO or whether you're a citizen or the president of the country. Generative AI will require us to think differently. Progress cannot be stopped. We have to fundamentally embrace three core principles that embody digital humanism. The first, algorithms can optimize for efficiency, but machines cannot optimize for happiness. There's a great story that happened in Europe. Folks that were senior citizens had a higher rate of depression. It was because they lost their ability to connect with people. And oftentimes, their place for connection was a grocery store. When you go into a grocery store and we put AI to work, what does it do? It optimizes for efficiency. You have your checkout lines that are meant to get you in and out. Seamless, self-checkout. But in this case, they created a slow checkout line, one where the seniors could engage with people, one that increases their happiness and their overall fulfillment. Lesson learned, allow machines to be machines and allow people to be people. The second area of change that requires us to think differently is around diversity. You see, diversity of sight is what we talk about today, but diversity is the potential to create value. Inclusion is the realization of value by driving full participation. This is the gift of generative AI. It is the ability to include a variety of people in the conversation to fundamentally increase the level of value. When you think about what we've told an entire generation of liberal arts majors, put that down. That's not going to earn you a living. You have to learn to code. Generative AI is about learning to think. Rise of the humanities. I believe that over the next five years, when you look at the makeup of top tech companies, 85% of that workforce will be led by AI-enabled liberal arts majors who will have the ability to fundamentally ask the right questions. When you think about the last area of focus 
that requires us to think differently about the world, it's probably the most disruptive. It's the force of ideation. When you think about how we create in the world today, it's ideate, then we build, then we operate. You see, all of our emphasis is put on build and operate, 80% of that value from our educational system to our enterprise system. Generative AI changes that equation. It puts the value on ideation. And here is the disruption. You see, those that tell you to stop progress want you to believe that you lose your humanness because of generative AI. Well, in fact, it is just the opposite. What makes you human, the ability to have compassion, empathy, love, emotion, all of that comes together in your ability to ideate. This is what ultimately matters. This is what it means not to be less human, but to be more human. When you think about this debate, I want you to think about who's worried about it and who's empowered. Who's worried? Those that are in control, the haves, those that have invested in a whole legacy of technology. For you see, a person with a cell phone in any part of the world, India, Africa, the US, doesn't matter. They are now put on the same level playing field. If you can think it, you can create it. This is the gift of generative AI. If you think about all the great civil rights leaders and everything they've done in all of history, one could never have imagined that it would lead us to this very point, a point where the ability to simply type into a search bar would become the greatest equalizer in modern day history. Thank you.